after the dissolution of, of bootleg, she, she was kind of like just drifting for a while and just kind of out there. And it seemed like no one was really giving her any love. One day it just dawned on me that how rad she was. I basically just thought about it and I was like, wait, Alyssa hasn't been sponsored for like two years. Like that doesn't make any sense. She's like she's the best girl ever. Someone should hook her up and I would love her to be on zero. Why haven't I ever thought about this? So I just called her out of the blue and was like, hey, I can't give you that much, but I'll try and pay you a little bit a month to ride for zero if you're into it. And she was into it. I was coming off the Fallen video and um, we were making Strange World and I didn't have footage for a full part and I basically thought it'd be tight to be in a montage with her, so it was cool. I was like in the relaxed Zero video. I wasn't like in the early ones where you hear all the stories about what it's like to film for a Zero video, you know. So there wasn't, you weren't out trying to film your part for the Zero video? No, like I would, yeah, I was out filming, you know, but I wasn't like, I'm getting this, I'm getting this. I would just like try to get tricks, you know. And I think, like, me and Jamie being friends for a long time, he kind of knew how I operated it or whatever, and it's not like that, you know? I like to be motivated. If I would go skate with him, he would try to motivate me to do stuff. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it would work, and sometimes I just wanted to eat pizza. I really wish she'd have been able to have a full part in some of the Zero videos, but... Um, I think a couple things happened. I think one was being around our filmers enough in order to make it happen. And I think two was is that she would get some momentum going and then she would get into something else. It was hard for her to keep that momentum going. And then when she did have the energy to keep the momentum going, there wouldn't be filmers around. Like I said, I'm not the hardest working person in skateboarding, you know. Jamie wasn't taking me on trips. I have to be on trips in order to skateboard. And I didn't have a board out. It was almost like I didn't ride for them anyways. So I figured why not just make it official and quit, you know. And I thought I would get another board sponsor, but um, nobody would sponsor me. So then, you know, without a board sponsor, I don't have a shoe contract. And so that's that. I don't know why she don't have her own everything. You know what I mean? Like uh, skaters like Tony Hawk and everybody like got their own shit, you know, like, and I'm not saying anything bad about them. Like they put in that work, but I mean, she's the best female skateboarder, period. And beyond that, she's the, like one of the best skateboarders. I don't see why she shouldn't have her own damn soda, amusement park video game, you know, everything. She really set the pace for all girl skaters out there and the standards and sort of made it acceptable and possible for a girl to make it in professional skateboarding. Before her, girls didn't have anybody to look up to to go, hey, I can do that too, you know? So she really paved the way for skateboarding and girls. It's been an honor to know her over the years and like, you know, see all that she's accomplished as a girl skater and, you know, and everything. And just, uh, I have nothing but respect for Alyssa. Paved the way, who knows? But I definitely like lived a skate rat life. I hate it, right? Girls I knew before then like weren't really skate rats. You know, they just kind of would skate, you know. I mean, back then, you know, if you were a skater, you were weird, and now it's like you're weird if you're not a skater. Do you think you'll, like, actively try to find a sponsor? Or do you think no, I don't think so. I think I've asked, like, the people that would want to, you know? There's no reason for me to, like, you know, ride for something that I don't really like, you know, just to, like, get a paycheck or whatever. It's like hard to say goodbye to something, you know, but I'm like kind of um, interested in what, what I'm going to do next. That's like a big dilemma in like sports. Like these people spend their whole life getting to this level of doing that one thing the best they can to be a professional at it. And then it ends and you're just like left with this loss of like, oh my God, what do I do now? Nobody wants to let that go. but. That's like 
eventually, if you don't let it go, somebody's gonna like pull it away from you or whatever, you know, so. Wait, is your dog, where's he? He's all right, he just hangs out in the yard. So here, this is all, all our surfboards and there's a bunch up there too. When did you first start surfing? A couple of years ago, like three years ago or something. Look at, see, this uh, this guy made it for me in San Diego, Seth Cutter, and he is Rob Welsh's neighbor. For Alyssa, rip it up, E. And then I put the Nar Hunters stencil on it. So sick. And then this one's my real favorite board. This guy, uh, Manny Carroll in San Diego made it for me. It's a sick shape. I've watched her grow up, I guess. Not that she was a baby or something. I'm not trying to phrase it like that, but you know, just mature. All of us lived on the road. Oh, speaking of that joke. Where were we before we came here, Donnie? And when you'd come home, it's really hard to turn off living on the road. And so you keep raging because you don't know what to do with yourself. You know, there's weed all over the coffee table and it's just a skate house. I've watched her become more relaxed in the past, like say, seven years of her life, and it's really cool. I look back on the times that I had, and I'm like, wow. Like, say, if I went to Paris, instead of just partying the whole time, I wish I would have went and saw museums, or like learned to surf earlier, so that when I did a tour of the whole east coast of Australia from the bottom up, I could have surfed, or like just been interested in other things other than skating and partying. Cause fuck that shit. That's all I did was skate and drink and smoke pot and do drugs and stuff, you know? And you can only do that for so long. I mean, some people can do it longer than others, but I guess it was just my time to not do it anymore. I really don't think I would be alive if I didn't stop, because I was pretty bummed out. Like, I wasn't really a happy person. My quality of life is definitely better. I haven't partied in like four and a half years. <laughs> And now I like do stuff, you know, I like jog sometimes and go camping and surf. I thought about maybe being like a surf team manager or something and just like going on surf trips and getting hotels and bananas for people and then just surfing. What do you like about surfing? Just fun. And it's something new to do, and um, skating came from surfing, right? And now surfing comes from skating. It was like the first two years of my surfing, I was just like lost. You know, I'd just drop in and just be lost. It's like when you first start skating, you know, like you suck at it, and then you get a little better, and there's like hope of you being good at it, you know? and then you keep trying and trying and trying and then maybe you get good at it and maybe you don't, you know, but you still like learn how to ride it better. I really like surfing, it's really fun. It doesn't hurt as bad. Except when my board hits me in the face. I, I gotta, I have like face karma or something. And my surfboard always hits me in the face. Can you see it? Okay, now hold on. That's like right after it happened. Can you see that? Look at, look at that. There's like more. People look at you so funny when you have that. Like what happened to her? 